Church family, day 111 of going through the Psalms. Who would have thought that we'd be here? Um, but that means we are on Psalm 111. And there's a lot of really beautiful things to learn about our God in this Psalm. So let's look at it together. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be, to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. So Psalm 111, the key to this psalm is found in verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This psalm teaches us what the fear of the Lord is. So looking at this psalm, we learn that the fear of the Lord is relating to God rightly. And in this psalm, we learn to relate to God as creator, as king, and as redeemer. So let's look at each of those really quickly. First, creator. Verse 2, great are the works of the Lord. Think of the works of creation, how he created out of nothing. And later on, we see that the works of his hands are faithful and just. The language here should remind you of Psalm 8, where we learn um, of the handiwork of God's fingers, how he was intimately involved in creating through personal work with his hands. So we learn to relate to God as creator, but we also learn to relate to him as our king. Look at these words of kingship, full of splendor and majesty is his work. So his work of creation declares his kingship over all things. And what else does he do? He provides food for those who fear him, just as a king ought to provide food for his people. And he remembers his covenant forever, and he even has commanded his covenant forever. And so with this language of forever... A human king cannot command forever. Only a God king can do that. And also, just as the works of his hands are faithful and just, we see that his precepts are trustworthy. His precepts being his laws, his commandments, the things that are true about him. Again, they are established forever and ever, which an earthly king cannot do. Only a king who is God can do that. And lastly, we learn to relate to the Lord as Redeemer. And this is powerful here. First, early, he says that the Lord is gracious and merciful. And here is this beautiful line that reminds us of Jesus. God has sent redemption to his people. And so what does this mean? It brings us back to this idea of the fear of the Lord. Our God is an infinite, eternal being who created everything out of nothing, who rules over all things, and who redeems a people from sin and death for himself. And so what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is relating to God rightly. We relate to God as his creatures, as finite beings looking at an infinite God. We relate to God as his subjects, as those who worship a king who rules over all things. 
And because of the redemptive work of Jesus, we also relate to God as his children, even as his friends. So the fear of the Lord is indeed the beginning of wisdom. How do we practice it? We practice it by knowing God as creator, king, and redeemer.